welcome to another edition of What's the Story here on The People Chronicles. My name is Joe Painter. I thank you very much for joining me and for listening and sharing the stories that we bring to you on The People Chronicles because they touch people's lives and we learn and we grow from them. And um, I have a gentleman with us that I have known for quite a few years and you are well known in the community. I would call him a visionary and an artist. His name is Ed Terrell. Thanks for coming in, Ed. Hello, John. I, I yes. appreciate seeing you again. We've known each other for many years. Yes. And I've always wondered, so I'm going to ask you right now. You weren't born and raised in Reading, is that correct? I was born in Philadelphia. Born in Philadelphia. And I came here at the age of maybe five years old, and I went to Lawrence Park Elementary School for, in the first grade. Well, then you are a Reading native. <laughs> yes. I guess I thought you weren't born and raised here because I know that you've traveled extensively. Well, I I traveled right after high school, say maybe two years or a year after high school. I left Mm -hmm. Reading. Mm -hmm. I left uh, Reading and went to California. And from California, I went to Oregon. And from Oregon, I went to uh, Norway. California, Oregon, and Norway. Yes. What took you to those places? Curiosity. Okay. Curiosity. Very curious to see where I really was on the planet Earth. Because when, like I said, I left Reading and went to California and then to Oregon. And I used to venture off into Mexico a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Come down the Highway 1 and go into Mexico and Guatemala and these types of places. And then I decided to uh, go to uh, Europe. So I I, I went to Norway. I was in Norway for some years, maybe two years, three years. And then I ventured off into Europe. It sounds like a wonderful adventure. What were you doing? Finding yourself, finding art? I I would say a combination of both, finding myself. Mm -hmm. Because in the course of finding myself with my uh, deep desire in the arts, it helped me uh, maintain a a form of uh, existence wherever I went with the arts. So as you were traveling, you were creating art? Yes. And selling art? Yes. Where did the art come from? Since you were born, who, who nurtured that part of you? I, I would say my nurturing in the arts really started out in Lars Park Elementary School because mm. there was like a lot of art contests and then there was before there used to be comic book contests in the back of a comic book they would tell you to draw uh, Mickey Mouse or Bambi and you would send it in and uh, if you won they uh, I won a contest once and uh, I w- went to art school for like three months or six months in Philadelphia based on this contest I, w- I did a picture of Bambi and uh I used to take the, the train from Reading down to these art classes on a Saturday. It was by myself. You know. What a gift that was. <laughs> I mean, you never know. A coloring, co- I never won those because I could never stay in the lines. For the life of me, I cannot stay in the lines. Yeah. Do you stay in the lines? Yeah. You yeah, do? I do. I try. I do abstract, and I also do surrealism and realism type of paintings. And I try to make it to the point where the, the visual onlooker is comfortable about what they're seeing. Because that's how that helps sells it. If people see art and pictures that are painted, that they feel comfortable about it, that is, it's kind of something that they can identify with, and they feel pleasant with it being in their home. That's what most art ends up and it ends up in people's homes. That's interesting. So as you're creating, mm-hmm. you're thinking, I want the viewer the owner, the purchaser, to be comfortable with what they're seeing. Yeah. How could you know that? Because there are so many styles and tastes. Well, out of the different styles and tastes that people have, there's always one person that would like that particular mm-hmm. style of painting. It's, it's, like, it's a gamble or a chance, or you can paint a series of maybe a certain style of paintings would end up with maybe 12 or 10 or, or, or 20 paintings that are all kind of in sequence. And you have an art exhibit, and maybe 200 people or 100 people come out, and out of that, maybe two or three people will purchase one right, right. of those particular paintings. It's the odds you take uh, for presenting this type of uh, imagery to uh, a clientele. I have to tell you, Ed, I'm not well versed in the art world um, in terms of the different terminologies. Mm-hmm. So, how would you classify yourself? What type of artist? In what medium is your I, I forte? Would s- I have so many different mediums, so I just classify myself as a freelance artist. Okay. Meaning that I'll, I will do and paint just about anything. So Oil, acrylic, yes. acrylic, watercolor, all of that? Yes. Sculpture? Somewhat. What's your favorite of those that I mentioned? My favorite is just painting on canvas. Painting on ca- with what? 
With acrylic. Acrylic. With acrylic. Because it's a, it's a quick type of medium, and I'm in business. There you go. So it's a turnover real quick, more so than oil. Oil is very nice and very refined, but there's a, a long process to it. Doesn't acrylic dry quick? It dries quick. So then it's, it's hard it's for you to manipulate, isn't it? Once you're done... Like but you, you, can always, you can always paint on top of it. Oh, you can? You can. It, it, okay. it takes itself within itself. So there's the a acrylic. sort of eraser built in. Yeah. It dries flat and it, it dries smooth, and you can always paint on top of it, and they, the mistake or the color... Are, do you draw first and then paint? Or yeah. Do you? Use paint? Do you? Yeah. I yeah, you, you, you sketch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you said you, you like... Except for abstract. Abstract, you don't draw. You just create as you go along. <laughs> so abstract would be, for example, something that isn't a particular form. It's not a vase. It's yeah, it's, it's something... It's not a particular form. It's not a form that has uh, really been seen by... Is Picasso an abstract? By, uh, Is that abstract? He's, he's kind of abstract. And I guess we would say surreal type of uh, painter. Abstract and surrealism. Yeah. I was at a um, Queen City restaurant about a month ago. Yeah. And I was going in to see El Sayed. And those are landscapes. And I saw <laughs> these I saw these paintings on the wall as you go in yeah. and then I'm inside at the booth and I could see it through the window and I'm thinking this is beautiful. These are beautiful paintings on the wall. I said, I'll say, Ed, who did that? He said, Ed Terrell. I said, get out. Yeah, that was me. So you'll paint anything. Yes, I will. If it's, if I had, mostly in the city, if somebody, uh, you know, employs me, I'll do it. And sometimes I do things just spare the moment if I feel it is necessary. You seem to have a very strong notion, and correct me if I'm wrong, that art has a very prominent place in a city, on buildings, outside, on things, it brightens, it livelies, livelies up the city? Yes, uh, it, it really does. It, it has a way of being a part of your environment. And it's, it's good to have art around your environment. It's very important to have uh, things that look nice around you. And uh, art is a medium that kind of transforms things that are drab into nice n niceness, if that's a word. Uh, you can have a, a door that's old, and you can uh, scrape the paint and repaint it, varnish it, and finish it, and, and you feel good about going through that door. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very nice to have uh, public art or and art that's in the community that the public can enjoy it other than going into a museum or into a, an exhibit or a studio. That's called public art, where the public uh, is kind of invited into this space of, uh, oh, wow, look at that building. You know, it's you know, I never thought of it like you just characterized yeah. it. You know, you could go to a museum and you could see art or you could just go down the street yeah. and it's available to everybody. I hadn't thought about it in that context, yeah. but I do know that whenever I am in a city um, and I see art, there's building, building, brick, brick, whatever, and then there's art, it's like, wow. Yes, that's and, that word. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it jumps out at you and, yeah. and it, it feels good. And you try to see it all before the light changes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So you do that here in Reading. Yes, I, I've been doing that in here in Reading for the last, um, I would say, 16 years. What is your, man, this is a tough one. You've done quite a few murals. Yes. Do you have a favorite one? Well, my favorite one is down by the uh, Reading Area Community uh, College there. I did it with an artist named uh, Mike Miller. We, we teamed up uh, uh, some years ago, maybe 12 years ago, and we started doing murals around the city. And this particular mural uh, is called Looking Forward, Looking Backwards. And it's uh, about the, the past and the future because it's dealing with scenes of the river. Mm -hmm. We uh, um, kind of got together with uh, George Miser, a famous historian here, and uh, we picked out some of his pictures and we reproduced them and we put them on an old canal bridge down there in the back of uh, Reading Area Community College. And until this day, it's still quite prominent. I have to go look. Yeah, it's, no. it's two sides of the, the, of the canal. And so I got to learn some of the history as uh, uh, conversing with uh, Mr. Miser. And I... Uh, I enjoy that. I got to know a lot of things about Reading. So in that case, it's not only aesthetically pleasing and inviting, but it's a learning tool. It's a learning tool. About the city. About the city. Because that, uh, on that particular mirror, there's an image of the Meded power station. It used to be on the Schuylkill River oh, down get there. Out. And they used to burn coal 
sometimes in there mm -hmm. and they would burn the coal to take the coal down there in front and on, on, on canal boats and that bridge that we painted on was like one of the canal locks where is this bridge can you be it's more right specific? it's right behind reading area community college it's right behind it's on your way it's on river road going towards comcast okay now yeah. i know exactly where you mean yes it's gotcha. down that way and uh they used to uh burn the coal the coal would turn into ash. They bring the, the canal boats back up into the city, up around Second Street, and they used to take the ash. And there was a, a factory there. They would use the ash and to make bricks, mm. mix it, and they would, this is how a lot of the houses were built from uh, the bricks. I did not know that, but yeah. I know the canal was very active. It was very active. I mean, that's where it all the merchandising the, and moving. Yeah, to develop the the community of Reading. That's just one of many murals yes. that you have. Mm -hmm. I have about for thirteen us. or fourteen. Do all of the murals um, say something about the city? Is there an element of Reading? Yeah. Oh, yes, murals? yes. Like you were talking about the one over at Queen City Diner, there's the Pagoda, mm -hmm. there's uh, the Reading Railroad, there's the fire tower that has been incorporated mm -hmm. in it. And, and throughout the, the city, when we do murals, we try to get the community involved and try to get input on what they would like to see. Because when you put a... A painting such as uh, three stories high or two stories mm -hmm. high in some in some property, the community has to live with that. So they have to kind of um, be comfortable with that in their neighborhood. So they we have these types of uh, input from the from the community. If you were going to paint a mural that depicted the people of Reading, how would it look? It would look very diverse because Reading is a very diverse community. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm working I've been working on putting one together for the one of the gateways into the city over by Lancaster Avenue. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a work in progress. It's like 2 years we've been talking about it and it's just putting uh, the right proposal together to put on um, the right desk to examine it. That's how a lot of murals are. A lot of the art projects you have to uh mm, kind of be put a proposal together and get the right parties involved to participate in either financially or just putting yes. the, the ghost the, the the green light go do it so you can do that so if you would like to see more art in the community of reading let the people know contact city hall say i'd like some more of these things yes and get them up there you have shared with me and i think we'll see them on the screen momentarily some conceptual art that yeah. I thought looked pretty cool. One was on some bus stations. Yes, the, the bus stops. So the bus stops here in Reading, I, I have a... Uh, it looks like... See, as an artist, when you go around the city or when you go anywhere, you see walls and you see mm -hmm. plaques and stuff. And you, you can picture art there because it's already square and it's already laid out. It's just that the image is not there. So on these particular bus stops, I've seen, wow, you can put a 30 by 40 painting there. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly Just like, like the one with the flowers. Yeah. It's very, very pretty. You can put it th that there. And they don't have to be permanent. I'm not, I'm not really attached to, to my work. This is very, very strange. A lot of people are attached to their art. To, I mean, artists are very attached to it. But once I finish it and it either has a buyer or if it doesn't have a buyer, I just go on. Because I've been doing this so much in my life that it, it's just a part of me. If I own it or somebody else is owning it, it's, it's, it's just there. You strike me as, as the kind of gentleman that looks at a, a wall and says, I see something else there. Yeah. You always, <laughs> you're always seeing something, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I am. Well, I am. I'm hoping that you can continue to create and paint and beautify our city because we're in the middle of a revitalization yes. effort. And I think art plays a key role. It, it does, it does, because we have so many thousands and thousands of communities and cities in our uh, country. And I, I think Reading uh, is at the point now that it has to re-identify itself to the point where it, you make uh, a lot of artistic things happen and it attracts people. People are, are toned to attraction because it's a visual part of their uh, consciousness. They learn from uh, seeing things. They learn from hearing things. But the visual part, at first you see it, and then somebody will tell you a story about why you're seeing what you're seeing. And it's there. It's in the art. So I'm hoping that our city will take on a, uh, a, a very big uh, abstract approach that we can uh, do things where people go, wow, unbelievable. You know, like that, instead of, oh, from town to town. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's go, to, let's go here, let's go there, so that. It does beg one last question. What? If that comes to fruition and we see art all over Reading, what would you like that art to say about Reading? 
visitors. I, I would like art to say to visitors that this is one heck of a creative town. <laughs> These people, are, <laughs> when do they sleep? <laughs> they don't. And you know what? With residents like yourself, Ed, we are very blessed to have you here and to continue creating and, and giving that contribution to us and the ideas. Yeah. So I appreciate that very much. And thank you for your time and thank being my guest. Thank you for having me here. I enjoyed it very much. My pleasure, Ed Terrell. And thank that you. is What's the Story? Enjoy a delicious breakfast, lunch, or dinner seven days a week at Heidelberg Family Restaurant. We also serve family-style dinners in our banquet room every holiday. Enjoy ham, turkey, Pennsylvania Dutch filling, corn, peas, a beverage, and roll, priced right for adults and children. And don't forget delicious desserts baked every day in our own on-site bakery. Heidelberg Family Restaurant, the best-kept secret in Robazonia.